All right, let's get started. So uh, first, uh, I would like to thank uh, you, Andre, and Daniel for organizing this uh, seminar series. It's just fantastic to have uh, now a virtual community working on ISS. And after uh, this very nice introduction uh, of me by Andre, uh, since uh, the group of people is uh, attending is, is quite large, and I don't assume that everybody comes from the ISS field, I'm gonna do, I'd like to do a brief reciprocal thing of introducing Andre and just pointing out to everybody who doesn't know him that, that Andre is one of the leaders in uh, the ISS theory and the small game theory uh, in infinite dimension, both for infinite uh, size ODs and for PDs. Uh, so uh, let's start with, uh, with the title and the, and the topic. Uh, I'll be talking both about analysis and design. Uh, the design, the prescribed time stabilization uh, that I will cover here uh, contains uh, very little of what is actually recent. None of the designs are newer than, than several years because I've chosen to, to speak about something introductory and basic. Uh, but these designs established an ISS property that is uh, unconventional. And this is why I uh, pick uh, this top topic for this forum when uh, uh, Andre and uh, Daniel invited me. Uh, this is a work with a number of collaborators and not simultaneous collaborators, but several clusters of collaborators. And what I'm showing here in, sl sl in a slightly larger font in brown, those are collaborators whose work I'm uh, including. There's a lot more with collaborators uh, whose work I just don't have time to, to cover. Um, there, there, uh, there are these two uh, couple masters of the craft of robust adaptive control by, especially by output feedback, Krishnamurti and Kurami, who have some of the, the state of the art results uh, on, um, on systems, on nonlinear systems with unmatched uncertainties. There's Wuchuan Li, with, with whom we now have a number of results uh, extending what I'm going to talk about uh, here today to stochastic uh, nonlinear stabilization in prescribed time. Uh, one of the key contributors and inventors of how to uh, convert uh, these methods to PDs. Nicolas Espitia has, has been a collaborator uh, to me and Drew and, and so on. So uh, the hand of several collaborators will be evident from uh, the very varied typesetting of my slides. They will, it's, it's gonna be pretty evident. There are probably five or six different people have been constructing this, but uh, while I do apologize for the non-uniformity of time set, uh, typesetting uh, in appearance, uh, the notation is actually uh, uniform, so I'm content with, with, with this kind of Frankenstein approach of, of preparing uh, this lecture for you. One person not listed among the collaborators is Yasun Karafilis, and we did not work on this particular topic together. However, uh, what I have to say today is highly influenced uh, by his lecture a week ago. It really opened my eyes as to what is it that I'm presenting uh, for you a week after, after him. Uh, this is a growing field and it's, a connected, it's connected with some other fields. Uh, the literature is enormous. Uh, I, uh, want to present ideas. Uh, I don't have time to catalog the, the literature, so I apologize in advance that I will have no time for an extensive review of the related literature, even, even, even of those, those that I have co-authored. Um, and especially I don't have time for, for, for the review of the largest um, uh, segment of the literature that, that achieves uh, finite time stabilization, which is sliding mode control, and uh, more recently, fixed time stabilization by non-smooth and homogeneous feedback. Okay. So here's my outline. 
Uh, the inspiration for prescribed time stabilization, for me at least, comes from uh, learning about missile guidance from uh, John Holloway and about some unconventional time varying controllers that uh, achieve stabilization in, in fixed time. I'll start with that and then uh, overview some definitions on fixed time ISS, including this unconventional uh, uh, possibility of achieving an asymptotic gain of zero. <clears throat> and then I will present some designs that achieve that property. First, by uh, full state feedback, then uh, prescribed time observer design and the combined output feedback. And finally, if I have time, uh, a, a couple of results extending this to PDEs. Okay, so <clears throat> I insist on saying that the inspiration, not the motivation, comes from missile guidance. That uh, that is not exactly the primary purpose of of uh, doing this work. There, uh, the inspiration comes from it. The motivation for for future applications comes from many other apl uh, applications, including as I'm as I'm very uh, co and constantly and recently uh, learning new possibilities such as in batch chemical reactors, in um, uh, the manufacturing, for example, of pharmaceuticals, something, something quite uh, unfortunately relevant today. So let's get started with missile guidance. So this is a sketch of a missile guidance problem, pursuit evasion, um, uh, the missile is trying to hit the target. There's a line of sight angle lambda uh, and for small lines of sight, what's relevant is actually uh, this um, um, this um, uh, perpendicular component uh, Y, which is the subject of control. So the simplest formulation of a missile guidance problem uh, happens to be a model that is a double integrator, nothing more than that. The so-called proportion navigation con controller was uh, developed. Who knows the you know the actual the origins of, of the unpublished literature? But I'm guessing guessing the 1940s and certainly no late, later than the 1950s. Uh, this um, feedback remains in use, and you will see in a second why. Um, and here is what the controller is. Everybody knows the double integrator. Everybody knows a number of ways to control it. Well, with proportional navigation, the double integrator is controlled by this feedback. So you see this feedback takes the displacement y, divides it by a function that goes to infinity as time goes to the time t naught, the initial time plus capital T, an additional finite time, and then takes the time derivative of that. So it's some sort of a um, pure derivative feedback of a time scaled uh, output variable. Or after you apply the, um, the differentiation rule to this ratio, it turns out to be actually PD feedback with appropriate time varying gains that go to infinity. In proportional navigation, there's actually no division by this time scaling function, but there is a measurement of the line of sight angle, which already uh, incorporates with it uh, the division by this time variable. So it's a, uh, it's a form of damping feedback. Uh, what can be guaranteed by it? Uh, it's been theoretically known for decades now that uh, the output goes to, to zero. In other words, in missile guidance, the, the target is, is hit. What's also, or maybe even more interesting, is that, that very prominent authors that everybody knows, Larry Ho, Art Bryson, and, uh, et cetera, uh, proved as far, far back as 1965 in their um, transactions on automatic control paper that proportional navigation is actually an optimal intercept uh, strategy. Uh, but while being optimal, uh, this controller for the double integrator does not achieve what we always would want to achieve with the double integrator, namely drive both of its states uh, to zero. 
it drives only the displacement, but not the velocity uh, to zero. And the control doesn't necessarily uh, go to zero. This is because it's a heuristic um, uh, strategy. So with the velocity not going to zero, you cannot use this feedback for related applications. So instead of uh, missile guidance, if you wanted to dock satellites, um, you could not, you definitely would not want to use a feedback that doesn't guarantee the, the, the uh, relative velocity uh, goes to zero. So we need, uh, even in, in the realm of aerospace applications, we need uh, some modifications and improvements to this strategy. So let me now move into the, the basics of, um, of what, uh, and, and definitions. So the most basic thing in all of this is this particular function that linearly uh, decays to zero over a time interval capital T. You would see that type of a function as the solution of the system in sliding mode control, starting from some initial condition and terminating at a time that depends on the initial condition due to the use of the bounded signal feedback, feedback law. Uh, that is not the context for uh, uh, how this function is used in this, in this talk, but it's important. This is the, the basic function that, that governs the um, regulation of signals uh, to zero. The reciprocal of that function will play the role of gains in the designs that I will uh, present. So when you divide uh, one by this function or some power of this function, then, then you get, um, um, for n equals, equals one, you get a hyperboloid. So you get, you get a, a gain that grows towards infinity. So that will be a, a the key ingredient in the design functions of this form, one over nu. Let's now go to uh, stability definitions. The most basic stability definition over a uh, finite time that does not depend on the initial condition is what is typically called fixed time stability, or sometimes with more precision, fixed time global uniform asymptotic stability. Um, global and uniform possibly could be dropped, but fixed time and asymptotic and stability, that's, that, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's the key here. Uh, how is this defined? It's defined simply as the property that there is a class K alpha function bound, which goes to zero over the time interval capital T. I like to write uh, this definition using a conventional class K alpha function with a um, decay uh, of an infinite horizon, but with this time dilation in which I, I employ the function mu one, which is one over nu. So, so uh, this is a function that dilates uh, time from zero to capital T to zero to infinity. In other words, uh, this is uh, a definition that dictates that the state go to zero uh, by, uh, uh, by the time T naught plus capital T. Uh, to my knowledge, this property uh, was achieved by design for the first time by intent uh, by Andrei Poyakov in his 2012 paper on um, stabilization of linear systems in a fixed time, namely in uh, initial condition independent fashion um, by nonlinear homogeneous feedback. The next step in generalizing uh, this property and getting from stability to ISS is this property fixed time input to state stability. So you've already seen the class scale estimate. There's nothing really to uh, uh, say further on that, but you see the addition of the usual uh, gain function gamma uh, with an argument that is the supremum of, of the disturbance. Uh, that property uh, is achieved uh, and implicitly um, uh, formulated through uh, Lyapunov-like conditions in this uh, now very famous uh, paper and highly cited paper uh, by Vincent, Vincent Andrieu, 
uh, probably an Astolfi from 2008. Uh, the reference in which I find first the mention of an actual definition of this form is this paper by Lopez Ramirez, Yefimov, Polyakov, and Piroketti, uh, which is relatively recent, 2018. All right. And here is the, the heart of my talk. Maybe this is one of the one of the three or four most important slides. This is uh, the slide in which I define what I'm actually going to be achieving, which is more than this fixed time ISS. So uh, I first named this property fixed time input to state stability with convergence to zero or with attractivity to zero in our 2017 Automatica paper with David Song, Yujun Wang, and John Holloway, where uh, this property was achieved by, by design. After uh, Yasun Karakulis' talk a week ago, I realized that, that a more appropriate name is, is saying that this is fixed time input to state stability with the asymptotic gain on the input D being zero. Now, my slides will use the terminology and the acronyms from, from the old times because I can just not alter uh, these slides. These are PDF slides from various authors. So this is already hardwired, the notation ISS, fixed time ISS plus convergence plus C. All right, so let me now talk about design a little bit. So let me start from a scalar case. So just an integrator plus a nonlinear uncertainty. And for the sake of design, I will assume that this um, uh, nonlinearity is bounded by a product of a disturbance and which is unknown and unlimited and unknown function psi. This function psi is not necessarily zero at zero, which makes D a uh, non-vanishing or potentially equilibrium destroying disturbance. So we cannot simply dominate D. We, at best, we can, we can pursue input to state stabilization relative to this, uh, this D. And this is the design. Um, those of you who have worked on robust nonlinear control, you will immediately see this as, as nearly obvious. There is a uh, there are some constants in here. There is the square of the nonlinearity psi, and you would say, sure, that's nonlinear damping. Of course, you would use nonlinear damping uh, in the presence of a, um, an unknown and unlimited size disturbance. And you use X. Um, you would also say, well, that looks like some kind of an LGV uh, design, and it is. But in addition, there is a division by this uh, new squared, a function that goes to zero as time goes to infinity. So what is achieved with this? What's achieved is this, this property. And I put this, this little check up here just to alert you that this is one of the most important slides uh, today. So what's important in it? What's important in it is the property from two slides ago of fixed time input to state stability plus convergence that is achieved here. So please look at this, um, uh, this estimate. So uh, there is the autonomous part. There's a class KL uh, component in here. And this class KL component decays to zero as time converges to T naught plus capital T. Uh, this, this function, is an exponential of a reciprocal of time, sort of e to the one over t type of a uh, function, and it goes to zero at capital T, and all its derivatives actually go to zero with capital T. So this is an incredible, incredibly rapidly converging uh, to zero response to the initial conditions. But there is also a disturbance, and there is this ISS presence of the disturbance with again one over two times k lambda, and namely again that, that can be shaped with, a, uh, with the um, 
uh, with the design parameters, K and lambda. But in addition to all of this, there is a factor in front of the whole thing of nu squared, which uh, goes to zero quadratically nu squared. And that, that is what makes the asymptotic gain from D to X to be zero. As time uh, goes to the terminal time capital T by asymptotic, I, I mean in a general sense, not, not as time goes to infinity, but as time goes to a terminal time that may be finite. So that is that property that um, I mentioned earlier. And this property appears to be new and appears to not, not be um, achievable without uh, a time varying uh, gain. For instance, um, it is pretty evident that uh, this famous fixed time stabilizing feedback with a square root of X and a power three over two of X, which uh, achieves convergence in, I forget, pi over two or, or, or pi, that, uh, it, uh, that this achieves only fixed time ISS, not fixed time ISS with the, with the additional uh, asymptotic uh, gain equal to zero. Now, what about control? You know, the, the control looks scary. Uh, there's a division by a function that goes to zero. Well, that's what's, what's the interesting part. X goes to zero fast enough that the division by zero does not make uh, you go unbounded. So as, as you, for example, divide this estimate by new squared, you, you already trivially get the boundedness. That's not, not how in general one, one establishes uh, the boundedness of U. It, it's actually very, very, it gets very complicated establishing the boundedness of U in a dimension higher than one. But in the dimension one, it's immediate. In this, uh, there, uh, there's more than one approach to achieving prescribed time stabilization. The first one that, that we used in the uh, 2017 paper with uh, David Song uh, employed the scaling of the state. The more recent uh, ways and the ways that I very much like, which have succeeded for PDEs, do not uh, involve that. The, uh, it is not possible to do this for PDEs. They instead involve the addition of damping that goes to, uh, to infinity. But in this particular um, uh, approach that uh, remains very, very good, uh, an excellent choice for, uh, and in some ways, um, a favorable choice for ODEs, uh, the state is scaled by a function that goes to infinity. Then in the new state, uh, one designs a stabilizing controller. And I stress stabilizing, not necessarily asymptotically stabilizing. It doesn't matter what, what you do over an infinite time horizon for a system that, that you operate in time t and you scale by something that, that uh, blows up. Because once you uh, reverse the um, transformation, um, then uh, having achieved stability of W or, or boundedness of W, X will go to, uh, to zero. So the study uh, of uh, such a scaled transform system W is done using uh, a Lyapunov technique that is summarized in this slide, which I call a comparison lemma because it looks so much like the comparison lemma uh, of, uh, in, in Caligal's book. It looks so much like the compar comparison uh, lemma by uh, Bott and Bernstein uh, under non-smooth right-hand sides so of V dot and so on. So let us consider uh, now uh, some integer power of one over nu. And let us consider a differential Lyapunov-like inequality in which an input appears as well. And what's important to note that the input is not just plus d squared, but this good strong damping that helps out to reduce v in the minus mu v term appears uh, dangerously uh, with a positive sign uh, multiplying d squared. So, so there is this competition between, between the strength of the damping and 
the leverage that the disturbance has uh, as, as an input to this system. And it turns out, and this is a very nice, nice result, uh, it, it, it turns out that the following estimate holds uh, in this case. Uh, it is an estimate uh, of the fixed time ISS type, not a fixed time ISS with a zero asymptotic gain, but just fixed time ISS. Once you have that mu multiplying the disturbance, you get this. And the zeta function is the one that I've already uh, mentioned before. That's a function that goes to, to zero in, um, in finite time, and it, it has uh, its derivatives also going to zero. Uh, so in the transformed or scaled uh, state variable w, you do a Lyapunov analysis uh, of this type, you obtain fixed time ISS, but because W already contains a factor of mu, once you divide, it by, uh, divide by mu, for the system, you get fixed time ISS plus convergence to, to zero. Now, let me show you another uh, comparison uh, lemma, which I wrote this up just, just a, a few days ago. I hadn't seen this, this possibility before, but I think it's, it's very important in the context of, of, of this property of fixed time uh, ISS with an asymptotic gain of zero. So consider now a differential inequality without mu multiplying the disturbance. So, and assume now, rather than uh, these blowing up functions mu that are of the form um, of a polynomial form in one over t, assume that mu is any function that goes to infinity, either on a finite horizon or an infinite horizon, arbitrarily slowly, arbitrarily rapidly, just, just the property of uh, monotonically increasing um, to infinity. What can be proved is the following. So what you see here is an ISS type of an estimate in which the contribution of the initial condition is multiplied by a decaying exponential of the integral of mu. So this goes to uh, one over r goes to zero. So this is a, a desirable class scale type of estimate. Whereas the input enters multiplied by a function of time, which of course is bounded, but more importantly, after applying L'Hopital's rule to this expression, you see that the limit of this function gamma is zero. So it has a zero asymptotic gain. It was Jason's talk that, that nudged me to, to look into uh, this uh, differential inequality and to, and to work out uh, this estimate. Okay, now let's go from the scalar case to uh, general order um, systems in the normal form, or you can simply honestly call them the chain of integrators with an uncertainty in the uh, that is matched with the con control input. Uh, there are generalizations of this to strict feedback systems with unmatched uncertainties, and they were first achieved by uh, Krishnamurti and Karami, and then by Wuchuan Li and me in the stochastic case. I'm not going to be going into that. That uh, is definitely not introductory, and it's just explodes in technicalities. Let's stick with the uh, chain of integrators. Okay, so here's the feedback law. Uh, minimally changed relative to the form that you already saw. So there is again some gain plus the nonlinear damping psi squared times now a factor z, which used to be x over nu squared. Now this z is a full state feedback and it contains of a vector of gains 
of a matrix of polynomials uh, of one over new. I will show what that is. That is the complicated part. Uh, another scaling by one over new and uh, the vector X. And this P, the components of P uh, are uh, given recursively here and they're, they're um, functions of one over new, polynomial functions of one over new. So with that design, one obtains this property and I will not dwell on this. That is the property just like in the scalar case. Uh, it's fixed time input to state stability with uh, the asymptotic gain made zero by this new squared going, going to zero. Let's uh, step back to the missile guidance just, just for a second, not because that's our purpose, but because that's something uh, very well studied. So this is a simulation by John Holloway, who really knows the subject of missile guidance. And um, this is a comparison of proportional navigation. This is the per perpendicular uh, distance, uh, distance perpendicular to the line of sight. Uh, so this needs, uh, the, the objective is to drive this to zero. And you see that pro proportional navigation does that, but proportional navigation does not drive the velocity uh, to zero. The velocity ends up wherever it ends up based on the initial condition. Uh, the, the fixed time feedback from the previous slide smoothly and rapidly uh, um, achieves the convergence of y and y dot to zero. Uh, you can see that the uh, control inputs uh, are not wild and you know, they are nice, nice and smooth and not enormous. Uh, targets tend to maneuver. So it's important to study the robustness to those inputs. And a target might maneuver sinusoidally as given in this example. And as I've already shown you that the feedback is fixed time ISS with uh, the asymptotic gain of zero, you should expect that that uh, the this missile still uh, hits the target. In other words, Y still goes to zero regardless of the um, target maneuvering. And that is what happens here, as you can see with both Y and Y dot. Whereas the input essentially um, asymptotically absorbs the unknown maneuvering of unknown unmeasured maneuvering uh, of the target. Let's now look at the dual problem of uh, state estimation. So observer design. I will start, uh, I will do the observer design in a system uh, given in the uh, observer, uh, observer canonical form. So this standard system configuration with a chain of integrators with the uh, system coefficients uh, given in this vector that multiplies the output and, and then uh, the input contribution, just, just the introductory uh, canonical form. So for that configuration, the observer is designed uh, and this is a Lewenberger type uh, of observer where the output estimation error is injected here, y minus y hat, or the measured x1 minus the estimated x1 times the observer gain. Uh, in, in the basic Lewenberger design, that would be just a constant vector, but here it's a time varying vector gain, and it's explicitly given, explicitly and recursively uh, given by this formula, uh, where the gain does uh, converge, does, does go to infinity, and uh, it consists of powers of mu one, or rather powers of one over nu. Uh, what one can prove is the fixed time stability of the observer error system. And uh, it's relevant that in the computations, what's injected into the copy of the system in the observer doesn't go to infinity. And we do prove that actually the um, injection term remains bounded and in fact converges to zero as uh, X hat converges to X. 
Okay, so a little illustration of observer design. Again, a double integrator. Uh, for the double integrator, the observer would employ the gains G1 and G2. And my purpose here is just to, to show you, to, 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 so you get a feel for what these uh, G, I gains look like. So they are simply uh, a first power and a second power, uh, a, a first order polynomial and a second order polynomial of one over time. So with that type of an observer, what you uh, get for a system for a double integrator, which is actually um, an unstable, open loop unstable system driven by a known input, what you get is the convergence uh, of, the, um, of the states to the observer state. Now let's combine the state feedback and the observer into an output feedback law. So uh, the control has already be, been designed in a system uh, that is in a controllable canonical form. I will here restrict my attention to uh, linear systems without uh, a disturbance. Uh, so controllable canonical form, we already uh, have a design for that. This, in fact, is a slightly different design. It's not, it's not a design, uh, design for robustness. Um, it's a design simply for fixed time stabilization. So here is a design in, in which, as you would expect, there are gains which, which are polynomials of mu1 or 1 over mu. So all of this stuff in red, you've seen it in the scalar case, and it's also here. Uh, instead of employing the actual state, we're going to be employing the state estimate x hat. Now let's turn our attention to the state estimator. I already showed you a state estimator, but that was for a system in the observer canonical form, whereas the controller has been designed in the controllable canonical form. So when uh, needs to acknowledge that there is a, a similarity transformation between the controllable and the observer canonical form. This is an invertible matrix. And then one runs an observer in the observer canonical form, not in the controllable canonical form. And this is an observer that I've already shown you, already uh, designed, and, and its convergence properties have been established. So now we're combining that uh, fixed time convergent observer with a fixed time uh, stable prescribed time stabilizing controller, at least when uh, the actual measured state is employed in feedback. But now it's not the actual uh, measured state, but the estimate. So what we need to establish is that the system is stable uh, once the state estimate is employed. That is normally called the separation principle or certain equivalence in the standard um, uh, observer-based linear systems. And that is what we established over a fixed time horizon. So the overall system is, a, is an autonomous system consisting of the plant state and the observer state. And we established this fix, fixed time uh, global uniform asymptotic stability. But there's a condition. This is, this is important to appreciate. Uh, MO and MC are certain powers uh, of one over new employed in the gains of the respectively observer and the controller. And for this result to be proven, it is necessary for the powers of the gains in the observer to be not necessary, it's sufficient uh, uh, for the powers of, of the observer to be greater than the powers employed in the controller by essentially twice the order of the system. Intuitively, what does that mean? It simply means that the observer, since your operating system, a system over, over finite time, and you're employing the observer states, it's simply necessary for the observer states to 
to uh, converge to the unmeasured planned states a little faster than the controller is driving uh, the planned state uh, to zero. This is all happening simultaneously. It's not that one thing happens first, the other thing happens second. No, one thing happens faster than the other. So the observer needs to be uh, somewhat faster than the uh, controller. Let me now tell you how this is proven, because in the, it is in the proof that this input to state uh, stability with the um, asymptotic gain of zero uh, arises. So the first intermediate result is a fixed time ISS result with an asymptotic gain of zero with respect to a disturbance U tilde. This disturbance U tilde is the difference between the actual full state feedback with a measured state and the observer-based feedback law. So this is, this is a linear fu uh, function of the difference between x and x hat with a bunch of time varying gains. And with respect to that signal, this is a scalar signal, we establish fixed time ISS with an asymptotic uh, gain of zero. This is the first step. The second step is to turn the attention to that signal. And for that signal, we establish that it goes to zero. But I want to emphasize the structural way in which it goes to zero. It, is, it satisfies an estimate that is linear in the initial condition of the observer error, and it goes to zero. Um, I have not seen exactly this kind of an estimate uh, before, but I was sure that it had uh, been studied. And I, um, I asked the what what is this, this property called? He said, this is well known. It's, uh, it's the, uh, the so-called uniform asymptotic output stability where the state of the system is uh, C tilde and U tilde is its output. It happens to be a time varying uh, gain um, multiplied output of, of that system. I'm trying to remember uh, which paper this had appeared in, but I'm, I, I can't remember now. It, it, uh, it, it might have been some, some work by um, Sontag with Angeli or with uh, Yuan Wang. Um, okay, so this is just, just a repeat of the slide that I had shown. After all these lemmas are, are chained together, one obtains uh, fixed time stability for the overall autonomous system consisting of the observer and of the plant state. Uh, and this, uh, uh, this is just a simulation with a moving target, which I've shown you before with full state feedback, but now it is with this observer based feedback. And again, uh, in spite of the maneuvering uh, target, uh, the convergence is achieved. Let's now uh, turn the attention to PDEs. I want to first say that there are two classes of, of PDEs, parabolic and hyperbolic. Uh, they always require different approaches, but in, in the design. But in the case of uh, finite time stabilization, the difference is drastic. Uh, for hyperbolic PDs, if they are stabilizable, they typically are also um, uh, finite time stabilizable with essentially no extra effort. It comes for free. Uh, it doesn't have to be done that way, but it can be done that, that way. It's, 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 a, it's a bonus that you get gratis by stabilizing um, hyperbolic PDs. The time of convergence is not arbitrary. The time of convergence is limited by the propagation speed 
in the transport uh, uh, components of the coupled uh, hyperbolic PD systems. In other words, you achieve it easily, but you cannot achieve it uh, in a prescribed time sense. For parabolic, the parabolic class is the interesting class for prescribed time stabilization. Uh, so for that class, uh, it's really hard to actually achieve um, uh, finite time stability, but it is achievable even in, prescri in a prescribed time sense for, for an arbitrarily short capital T. As I said, I will not have time for, for the literature, but let me just say that the first result uh, on, on this subject, employing backstepping, was produced by Wen and Koron. And I will be uh, presenting a solution uh, that uh, is more compact. Uh, it, is, it does not involve any uh, switching of uh, gains, but it's completely continuous in time in terms of gains. In other words, it's, it's, uh, it's completely consistent with what, what I've been showing you uh, so far. So I'm looking at the heat equation. Not that more general parabolic PDs cannot, uh, uh, cannot be prescribed time stabilized. This certainly can. All of those that can be exponentially stabilized can. But the point is that the heat equation itself is the key challenge. It's not, the, it's not an instability that makes prescribed time stabilization difficult for parabolic uh, PDs. It's just the very presence of the diffusion. So the, the diffusion is the vehicle for propagating the control input uh, from the boundary, but it also resists uh, getting the, the uh, state from going to zero too rapidly because it has these eigenvalues that go all the way to negative infinity, real negative eigen, eigenvalues that don't like um, finite time uh, stabilization very much. Okay, so how is this done? This is not done by scaling the state. It's done differently. It's done uh, by uh, defining a desired target system with damping that goes to inf uh, infinity, this time varying damping. This time varying damping is of the familiar form. Uh, and uh, explorations have been done uh, with using uh, not necessarily the second power, but the second power for, 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 for the heat equation has a bit of a magical um, a property. The third power is possible. The higher powers uh, analytically start, start creating some, some problems of, of, of tractability. So a standard backstepping approach of applying a Volterra transformation, but with a twist. The standard backstepping employs a kernel K of XY on this triangular domain. But for prescribed time stabilization, that kernel also needs to be time varying. And that kernel needs to actually go to infinity. And that kernel turns out this, this, is, this is the routine algebra to, to derive um, the conditions that that kernel needs to satisfy. Uh, those conditions end up uh, being in the form of this PD, which is a strange PD without the dependence on, on time, it would be a, a, a second order hyperbolic PD, but with the dependence of time, it's, it's, it's nothing really uh, that, that we can characterize in, 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 in that terminology. That is not, not um, that is uh, merely algebra deriving. But what's amazing is that um, Nicolas Espitia and his collaborators managed to find the explicit solution of this uh, PD. And the explicit solution, uh, which is fascinating, uh, differs little relative to the explicit solutions uh, when mu is uh, constant. This is very hard to actually achieve. And at the end, it looks so familiar, but it's not achieved easily. So this is an infinite sum of a gear polynomial, so one over new uh, that they, um, managed to explicitly sum up. So at the end of the day, it's a feedback law, which is an inner product of the measured state and uh, which goes to zero and of, 
uh, again, kernel that goes to infinity. Again, the question, does this product of, 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 of things converging to zero and infinity uh, remain bounded? And the answer is yes, that's, that's really what, what uh, uh, needs to be established. So two things uh, are on this slide. One is that the state um, has the fixed time stability property. And the other result is that the control is not only finite, but in fact goes to zero as it drives the state to zero. There is a condition here. Uh, we don't have it for ODE systems. Uh, the initial value of the mu function for ODE systems is uh, arbitrary. But for parabolic PDs, it needs to be uh, large if the diffusion is very low or if the prescribed time is very quick. So the more performance you want and the more uh, sluggish uh, um, the, um, the PD uh, is, uh, the, um, uh, the, the higher the initial gain needs to be. Uh, there is a dual observer design for this, and I don't have time to, to show you the, uh, the gains, but you can imagine that they um, mimic those, those gains that uh, Espitia managed to uh, find explicitly. So that's possible also for, for the observer. And the observer is fixed time uh, stable, and the observer error state, again, with a with a condition on the initial value of the, of the game. And finally, coming back to ISS. Finally, everything is as in um, the, uh, the finite dimensional case. The observer error acts as a disturbance in both the observer system and in the plant. So one has to study uh, ISS with respect to that. And then one has to employ the fixed time uniform asymptotic output stability property that I mentioned earlier. And with an assumption that the, the, the observer gain, uh, the observer converges uh, faster than the controller, namely that the observer gains uh, dominate the gains of the, of the controller. Uh, output feedback stabilization is achieved. All right, so my last slide to summarize that uh, this prescribed time stabilization achieves fixed time input to state stability with the assignment of the asymptotic gain to zero, which is something that we have not seen achieved and almost certainly is unachievable uh, just by um, static state feedback, no matter how non-smooth. Even the signum function, the relay, the discontinuous feedback, which achieves actually a perfect rejection of a disturbance, needs the maximum of the disturbance to achieve that. This property is different. The uh, no, uh, no bound on the disturbance is known. The disturbance is unknown and arbitrarily large and yet uh, fully rejected by the terminal time. Uh, we are currently studying, don't, don't ask me about the effects of measurement noise. There are positive uh, results in that direction that you know, we'll, I will talk about once it's ready uh, for submission with, with uh, Drew Steves. Um, what I don't talk about here is, is a growing collection of results for the stochastic case. Uh, and, and I should say that uh, stochastic disturbances on the right-hand side that are of the vanishing type, namely multiplicative type, we, we have uh, solutions to, for those problems. Uh, and, uh, um, and the additive stochastic uh, disturbances are yet to be tackled. Finally, I consider uh, as far as the ISS discussion is concerned, uh, considered, I consider this to be still unfinished, maybe even half-baked, because 
the moment ISS steps into the picture, what comes to my mind is cascade theorems and small gain theorems. And I have nothing to show on that subject. And it is not because one cannot produce uh, small gain conditions for feedback systems uh, that have this uh, asymptotic gain of zero property. Um, it's not that one can, cannot produce theorems. What I'm uh, still uh, um, don't have is actually design problems where configurations of that kind um, arise. So uh, that is, is something that still needs, uh, is, is, is quite open and to be uh, explored. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, I'd be happy to take your questions.